Hey my local fans, welcome back to my channel. Now for those of you that follow me on Instagram, know that I've been having problems with my phosphates for like the past month. I've tried to correct them, I've done changes, but the next day after, they would come back up again. Really stressful situation. So I've come to the conclusion that my sand is the culprit for making my phosphates rise up over and over again. I don't overfeed. I try to keep minimal nutrients in the tank, but my lack of maintenance in the past year on my sand now is coming back to bite me. Why do I say that? Because when I would do water changes, I would just skim the top of the sand. And as I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, I had about maybe two and a half inches of sand at a certain point in time in a 10 gallon. That's not good. So all this detritus, all these nutrients have built up in the sand. And no matter what I try to reduce my phosphates, they keep coming back. So I'm going bare bottle. Now I have enough bacterial filtration and mechanical filtration in my tank so I'm pretty confident that this procedure will go pretty well. Now what I'm actually going to do is, I'm actually going to remove everything from the, from the tank, including rock, my, my equipment, I'm going to give a thorough clean to my tank. I'm going to save some of, some of the old water, but I'm also going to make new water. So stay tuned so you can see how I do this. Now I'm going to check my phosphate once again just to see the difference before and after. Right now I have 24, which is 0 0.074 parts per million. I'm gonna go ahead and start draining the water out the tank. That way I can take out the rocks and place them in containers I have on the floor. Have to be very careful when removing the rock that way you don't break any of your corals. Or in case you have shrimp or crabs hiding underneath. At this time, I'm starting to remove all my Aiken frags. Some of which I'm going to show you in the video. As I said before, some of my Aikens are looking pretty bad and I've lost a couple. You can also notice hair algae starting to grow. Everybody's out into their temporary homes. That's my main rock that holds everything up. All my crabs are in there. And then everybody else is in here. Took them out nice and peacefully. And I pick the black bin, that way they don't stress anymore. Now it's time to clean this tank. What I'm gonna do now is try to suck out as much water and sand as I can, just to make the tank lighter and the cleaning easier. Look how dirty the sand was. Time to go. Now that the tank is clean, it's time to put everything back together. This tank was nasty. So here we're starting to put freshly made water back in the tank. I went ahead and cleaned all the equipment before placing it back into the tank. With water halfway, I'm gonna start placing all my rock back in. At this time, I'm gonna make sure with epoxies and whatnot to glue it back together how it was. It might not be the same, but you just have to make sure it's strong. That way your rock doesn't come crashing down on your glass.
There were a couple corals that fell off, so I went ahead and also glued them back in. I didn't use a net for my fish. I just used my hands and cupped them into the tank, which was pretty surprising because they were pretty relaxed. And there you have it. The tank is back and running and everything should clear up pretty soon. So guys, it's been about a week and the tank is doing great. I had a little bacterial bloom, but that cleared up pretty quickly. I officially have no sand in my tank. Let's take a look real quick. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope this video was informative and helpful to you guys and your reefs. I really like how the tank came out. I can't wait till it starts growing back up and everybody looks happy. Now, if you wanna watch more of my low cut adventures, please don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. And as I always say, keep living La Reef life local. Till next time, guys.